today we're talking about the question, do you need a business broker if you're going to buy a business? Let's check it out. I'm David C. Barnett, and you're tuned in to Small Business and Deal Making, the podcast, YouTube channel, and blog where I talk about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium-sized businesses while controlling risk. So if you're looking to take control of your future through buying a business one day, or if you already own a business and you're looking to grow or exit, you've come to the right place. I talk about interesting things, I talk to interesting people, and I answer your questions every week right here. So be sure to hit like and be sure to hit subscribe, and let's get to it. Are you thinking of growing your business or beginning a journey into entrepreneurship? Take a shortcut to success by buying an existing and profitable business the right way. Visit businessbuyeradvantage.com and learn more about my online training, group coaching, and consulting services designed to help you win. So I've gotten this question from four or five people over the last two months, and I thought, you know what? Uh, sometimes I, I forget to go and touch base on the basics and just get back to, to you know the fundamental things because there's always new people joining the audience all the time. So, so the question is, you know, if, if I want to go buy a business, do I need to hire a business broker to help me go and buy a business? And I think that the idea behind the question comes from people's experience with uh, real estate, for example, buying a house. And so uh, the answer is no, you don't need a business broker to buy a business. But it opens up a whole other conversation that I think that we should explore today. Uh, what exactly do business brokers do and who do they work for and what kind of responsibilities do they have? And who are the people out there who actually can be helpful and, and help you buy a business? Uh, what different roles do these people play? So, so let's talk about that because it actually can change depending on where you happen to be standing. So I'll give you a, a quick example. Back when I was a business broker, uh, here where I live in New Brunswick in Canada, uh, business brokers are covered under real estate legislation. And uh, that meant that if I listed a business for sale and then I spoke with a buyer, um, then I fell under the legal mandates and rules for dual agency in the real estate space. So I had a, a, a fiduciary duty to both parties with respect to disclosure and you know fair dealing and, and how I manage those relationships, et cetera. And so um, it's not like that everywhere, okay? So in, in some places, there is no fiduciary responsibility to the buyer. Uh, in some places, the business brokers just entirely work on, to the benefit and on behalf of the seller, uh, trying to get you know the best interests uh, for the seller, and they don't have any responsibility for what they might say or do with respect to you. Now, would a business broker uh, benefit from treating a buyer fairly? Yeah, of course, right? Um, but you know, there's a wide range of people in the industry. Now, in some places in the world, and you know, Florida, I think is the one place where this is kind of entrenched, um, there is more of a buyer seller, each person having a representative kind of thing like real estate in the world of business brokerage. And that's because uh, I think real estate agents kind of establish themselves in this uh, small business space you know, back in the 1980s or what have you. And they even have online portals for, for advertising businesses for sale. And in order for the buyer and the seller to each have an agent and to have this system kind of work, you need to have what's called cooperation between the agents. And so um, this is the case generally in North America for real estate. It's not like this anywhere else in the world to my knowledge. But in real estate, you hire a real estate agent who takes you around and shows you different houses listed by different realtors. And if you decide to buy one of those, the home seller pays their agent who then splits the commission with your agent, right? Now, deep down inside, I feel that there's the potential there for a bit of conflict because ultimately the money that pays your advisor is coming from the person selling the home, right? And so if your agent were to take you around and, and, and give you good advice that maybe none of the houses you looked at were suitable, uh, they wouldn't be earning any money for that. And, you know, great people in that industry are going to behave in an ethical fashion. Um, I always prefer to pay people that work for me so that I know that their duties, responsibilities, and loyalty are to me in my interests. Right. It's, it, you know, if you have employees in your company and you pay them, that it's obvious they work for you. 
if you have someone you rely upon that somebody else is paying, you know, there's always an opportunity for a conflict in that relationship. So business brokers go out and they find business owners who would like to sell their business and they list them for sale. Most business brokers are not going to cooperate with each other. So if you go to a broker and you say, hey, can you help me buy that business over there? And they contact that listing agent broker, the selling business broker, uh, there's a very small chance, there's probably hardly any chance in most places that the selling broker is going to agree to split their commission with, with the person that you hire, right? And so that means that if you did hire a business broker to help you with that transaction, th there'd be a question of how do you get, how does this person get paid? And so that then brings about the topic of buy side brokers, because there are people out there that call themselves buy side brokers and you can hire them. There is typically a consulting fee and there might be a percentage of the value of the business they help you buy that you owe them as well. And these will be fees that you're going to pay on top of purchasing the business. And you're going to pay it to that person uh, because they're going to be helping you and they're going to be working for you. So one of the one of the past guests, for example, um, and, and with respect to cooperation, um, I've even seen within franchise networks. So you might have two different Transworld offices or two different Sunbelt offices. And even between those offices, they won't cooperate with each other. So if you, if you talk to one broker at one office and you say, oh, I see that there's a, a listing at this other office. Can you help me buy that? They often can't. Um, you'll have to go and make a new relationship with the other office uh, in a lot of the instances that I have personal experience with. Um, and so buy side brokers, um, I've had a, as a guest on my program before, uh, Ted Leverett, uh, who runs a business like this. People go to Ted, they pay him a fee, he helps them figure out what kind of business to buy. He helps conduct the search. He coaches them through the process. He helps them with the due diligence. He helps line up all the other advisors. He does all of this stuff to help them do that. And people pay him for that, right? And there are other people that in a similar vein will help you search for and buy a business. Um, there are also people who kind of split and divide that capacity and do a more narrowly focused service. So there are people out there, for example, who will conduct searches for you. Uh, I've met a couple of them. And so what they will do is you pay them a fee, usually like a monthly fee, and they will contact a certain number of companies in a given industry or geography uh, and just make an inquiry. You say, hey, you know, we're looking for people that might wanna sell their business. So this would be an example of using an outsourced contractor for a direct proprietary search. Um, and you know, so they're calling people on your behalf and you're going to have to pay them for that. Right. And, and, and this is one of the things that people will often come to me with when they say, should I get a business broker to help me buy a business? They're looking for, typically for someone to hold their hand, but they're kind of wanting it to be free, like in the real estate buying experience. And that's not how it works uh, because everyone who is in any way connected to business brokerage knows it's one really hard to find a good target really hard to negotiate a deal to get an agreement on the purchase of that business. And then number three, uh, actually make the deal close. So to get people to do a whole ton of work entirely on contingency of your success as a buyer, uh, people that understand this community are going to be like, no, man, I'm not doing that. If you want me to do this work, you're going to pay me, right? Uh, business brokers, have a hard enough time with a contingency uh, payment model uh, and they control, quote unquote, the thing being bought, right? And that's probably the only reason why they're willing to do that. I know I lived through it and it was crazy. It was like a cash flow roller coaster. Um, so uh, on the buy side, you know, if you can't find anything the buyer would be happy with, you know, does that mean you worked all that time for no money? Like most people working on the buy side would only ever do that once before realizing it was uh, a terrible business. So there are search services. There are people like Ted who kind of do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I help people with this. Uh, I don't do searches for people, but I teach and coach people on how to do searches. And that's one of the primary things that we talk about in my Business Buyer Advantage group coaching program. And so uh, in that program, people are doing searches, we're getting together as a group, we're discussing uh, you know, the meetings that they're having, the calls they're having, 
Um, people are both doing direct outreach in that group and they're also using business brokers as a channel for finding businesses for sale. So if you're going to be going to business brokers to find potential businesses to buy, in all likelihood, you are going to end up creating relationships with all the different business brokers that are possibly going to have what you want. So if you're searching in a city, you're going to end up probably meeting most of the brokers in the city. If you're searching in an industry and you're willing to move, then you may end up talking to brokers, you know, across a wide geographical area, but that tend to maybe specialize in the kind of business that you're looking to buy. There definitely are brokers that kind of silo themselves in certain industries and whatnot. Um, you can develop the skills to do the search and you can amplify your efforts through other people. So I've had uh, many people actually in my coaching program who have undertaken proprietary searches, but they've employed the help of people like virtual assistants and things to help them do things like compile lists of, of prospects and and uh, or even to you know manage uh, some mail outs or follow up phone calls and, and things like that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be you that does all the work. You can employ other people to to help with the process. Um, you just you have to figure out what you're looking for and and what you want. Now, let's get back to you know the whole idea of fiduciary duty, responsibility, that agency capacity. So if you go to a business broker and they have a business for sale, whether or not you are in a place where legally that broker has a fiduciary duty and agency responsibility to you as a buyer, um, they're standing in the middle and they only get paid if you buy the business. So how then do you manage the fact that this person has this, you know, I don't know, this unavoidable conflict? You know, I always, I always say that if you're looking for a way to get around and you ask a car dealer, they're not going to tell you to buy a bus pass right? They're, they're going to try to figure out a way to sell you a car. And so um, the way that you deal with the conflict is through the other team members that you employ. And so who are they? Well, you're going to have a lawyer that is not going to be the seller's lawyer, right? Don't ever agree to that. That's crazy. Um, and so your lawyer is only going to work for you and they're going to work for your interests to help protect you from, or, or at least make you aware of all the different potential risks, hazards, et cetera, that you're getting into in the deal. You're going to have uh, an accountant or someone who is going to help maybe with due diligence. There are specialized firms. There's a whole world called quality of earnings. Um, but you're going to want some kind of help from a, an accounting tax point of view to either look at the business and to figure out how to best structure your acquisition vehicle. Like uh, how what kind of company you're going to set up to do the transaction or if you need to create a holding company to then buy the other company or, or whatever that's going to be a CPA, right? So you're going to need that person. And then you're going to have probably other consultants, advisors, um, even technical people. So, um, you know, some of the consulting services that I do in helping people look at business deals, that would fall into this category. Uh, and I work on one or two of these files every week where people find a business and they're like, Dave, I, I want you to help me look at this to figure out what it might be worth, what a reasonable offer could be. And I do that and I look at the information provided, I look up sample transactions and I give them an idea of what's reasonable. And then we test it versus the numbers to make sure that from a cash flow point of view, it really makes sense. Um, and so I don't work for the seller, right? So I'm just working for that buyer. Um, other advisors, like if you're gonna buy, um, oh, I don't know, if you're gonna buy a commercial janitorial business, for example, and you don't have any experience in commercial janitorial, um, you can go find people who act as consultants in that space. You can find the person who retired after 20 years of ownership in that industry, and you can bring them on board to help you look at the file, uh, examine some of the contracts, take a look at some of the you know estimates and, and quotes and things like that, and just look and make sure that the stuff in the business actually makes sense to someone who understands the industry. Um, and then um, you know other experts, including technical experts, if you're buying a business that has any amount of machinery, equipment, et cetera, you want someone to come in and examine it who actually understands that stuff. So, I mean, I've had clients before, people who have spoken to me who are buying businesses that maybe had 12 or 15 trucks. You want an auto mechanic uh, on your team if you're gonna buy a business like that because 
you need to have each one examined to figure out what the state of repair is for those vehicles. Is there any sign of like a major thing? Like are any of them giving indication that they might be headed towards a transmission problem, for example, right? You want to know that before you buy the business. And so th that's the balance. The, the broker, you know, is trying to sell that business. That's how they get paid. Um, you go there, you, you are going to have to demonstrate to them that you're capable of buying the business. They're going to try to convince you to buy it. They're going to, you know, try to answer your questions. They're going to try to serve you. Um, and most of them are, you know, decent people who are going to try to do a good job. Understand that they're being bombarded by potentially hundreds of inquiries from people who are completely unable to do a deal. And this is why sometimes we can get frustrated uh, with people in that industry. And just believe me, I know I've been there. Um, it can be overwhelming sometimes with the way the internet works. Um, so yeah, let's get back to this whole idea of the initial question. Do I need a business broker to buy a business? No, you don't. Um, business brokers are there to try and solve a problem in the market. And the problem they're trying to solve is one of visibility. Um, business brokers make it easier for buyers to identify businesses that the seller is motivated and has decided that they want out. And so they're listing the business for sale. And that's a great indicator of compulsion, a desire to sell the business. Well, when people do proprietary searches, they talk to a lot of business owners or reach out to a lot of business owners who have no interest in selling. And that can be frustrating. It's a lot of work. If someone lists their business for sale with a broker, then yeah, they want to sell. The, the flip side to that is that that enhanced visibility in the marketplace makes it easier for other competing buyers to also identify the business, which can have an upward effect on price if there's demand for that kind of business or even if there's just one other person at the same time who thinks it's an attractive opportunity. Anyway, it's a great question. Uh, keep them coming in. Um, if, if you're serious about learning how to buy a business, then head over to businessbuyeradvantage.com. That's where you'll learn all about my products and services, including the online training, the group coaching, and the consulting services that I do for people that I mentioned in today's video. Um, and with that, we'll say see you later. We'll talk to you next time. So how can you learn more about buying, selling, financing, and managing small and medium-sized businesses? Easy, go over to my blog site, davidcbarnett.com, where you can learn more about me and how I work with my clients. You can learn more about my books and courses that I've prepared for you. You can find out how to subscribe to my email list, the YouTube playlists, and more. There's literally hundreds of hours of content there, all for free, and I'd love for you to be my guest. Special thanks go to Mark Willis at Lake Growth Financial, today's video sponsor. Mark helps people better manage their personal and business finances through the bank on yourself insurance strategy. This is something I've done personally and I've seen others use it successfully for years. Go to newbankingsolution.com to find all the interviews I've done with Mark and learn more about the advantages of these programs. While there, sign up for a free consultation to learn what this solution might look like for you.